Good to see you back to another episode of uh, Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture, broadcasting live from the opposite ends of the world with Yu DeSoto from Bishop Museum in Honolulu, Hawaii. Hi, DeSoto. Hello. And Mir and me uh, near Munich in Germany. So if you drill through the globe, then you know that's <laughs> where we are. <laughs> kind of, kind of, yeah. That's where we then have the the, the coconut wire running through that. <laughs> so um, as far as I understand is that you guys, the Soto, are trying to get back to normal. Tourism is is quite up again. And, and you said, you know, all the discussions we had to say, well, we should have learned something from that. And we did a lot in talk but not so much walk the walk, right? Not any really actions have been taken. Is that correct? That is exactly right. And that's something that people are discussing right now because we had this period of introspection and examination of what do we want from tourism? What do we want in terms of our, how its effect on our lives, which is in some cases overwhelming. And yet now it's coming back and we really haven't done anything about yeah, yeah. what we were even talking about before COVID got started. Exactly. Last year in 2020. So we have to say, as brutal as it is, we're back to being overly full of ourselves and thinking of us being unique, you know, in many ways. And also one of the things we think of ourselves being unique is as being a prime wedding destination in the world, right? And for that, we can get the first picture up because uh, you and uh, our co-host Ron Lindgren, um, have been announcing already these two people here getting married, right? Yes, uh, we did announce that these two people got married, and uh, that's you and your your new wife, Suzanne. Exactly, and we already know her as uh, our uh, exotic escapism expert for that's a long right. time, consulting us because she has a degree in tourism and business. So she's the expert in that area. And but we are uh, originally and fundamentally Europeans and Europeans have not been let back into the US, including Hawaii. Right. So right. what do we do? Right. I mean, what connects us is Hawaii. She, you know, has been an au pair there and, um, you know, I've been there a while. So that's our that's our place. But we couldn't. And then also we're one of the biggest proponents of easy breeziness. So what, what do you do if you want to get married in COVID and you love Hawaii, what do you do? And what did we do? Well, you weren't able to come here. That was one of the things, because as Europeans, you weren't allowed to travel here and very few people were allowed to travel here. So you just told me that in Germany, there's a rule that you have to be married in an enclosed space, which you did not want to do. You wanted to be married outdoors. And you found a loophole where you were able to get married at a some kind of wedding facility, but outdoors in a forest. But it wasn't a jungle, warm jungle. It was a chilly temperate zone jungle where you said the temperature was in the 50s. Plus, it was raining and it was chilly. It was cold rain. So. You did the best with what you had, but you didn't have a tropical jungle wedding. Exactly. And this is the first time everyone sees me wearing it, what's close to an Aloha <laughs> shirt, too, which is by Jack and Jones, which is a Danish company. And they're interpreting uh, the tropical exotic. And that's what we allow. That's as far as we can go, right? Because we don't allow any or endorse any imitation but interpretation. <laughs> and of yeah. course, you know, Suzanne being a native of Bavaria and had to wear her native attire, the dirndl, as you were pronouncing it several times in the last couple of years. So uh, let's go to the next slide here and uh, keep you in the dark uh, for a little longer uh, because here we're basically seeing um, uh, in the continental U.S., this was uh, some years ago when I was invited back to my home away from home in the prairie in Lincoln, Nebraska. And uh, you see uh, that anywhere uh, in the continental U.S., 
our tropical exotic Hawaii has the biggest draw. You know, that's like the most tropical exotic destination. And that's why United Airlines is advertising that heavily. That particular aerial view is actually, we can see our homes on there because this is our front <laughs> yard. That's yes. as close as it gets. But the other kind of puzzling, uh, or this is less puzzling, but you found a puzzling picture and asked me about it. And that's at the top right. And what is that one? Well, that, I still don't know what's going on. That is a Hawaiian Airlines jet that was photographed at the Nuremberg Airport in Germany. Yeah. Who was it doing there? We'll never and, know. <laughs> well, not no. someone Someone bought the postcard that was on eBay. And so uh, maybe that person is doing more investigations. And if he watches or she watches the show, you know, they might be able to tell us. But um, that, that basically made me ask you a question that I had heard the rumor that back then in the glory roaring 70s, there were actually direct flights between Frankfurt and Honolulu, but you said not so much, right? Yeah, I mean, they, they couldn't even take as much fuel, you said, you know, doing that nonstop. So probably just no way, no wishful way. thinking, right? Yeah, yeah. I have so no idea mind. where that story got started. <laughs> never mind, never mind. All right, so then let's go to the next slide here and continue the confusion for a little longer because you see that German airline that you guys know, Lufthansa there. And then you see something that looks once again, just like on the, I think that was Chicago O'Hare on the last slide where I was doing my stopover to Lincoln where you saw Honolulu uh, advertised. So you're thinking, there we go. Once again, Hawaii is advertised there. If you could look really close, there is in very small letters, there's the airport codes on there and FRA is for Frankfurt. And then if I do this here, I'm wearing this shirt here today because HNL is for Honolulu. But that's not what it says on that one. It's actually FCL. So let's go to the next slide and um, slowly but surely are lifting the clouds here, although one could still think we are in Hawaii. But we put that little world map up there, right? And the, the red dot is supposedly, you know, the islands and they're off some coast of some continent, but that shape of that continent for the ones who are a little, um, you know, sound and safe and geography looks a little different, right? Yeah, it's not the Hawaiian islands, despite <laughs> your t-shirt that says Blue Hawaii. And it also, the, the coastline does look sort of like parts of the Hawaiian islands, but uh, you didn't come here on your honeymoon. So you went someplace else in the Atlantic Ocean, not the Pacific Ocean. Okay, but let's still try hard to insist, maybe, maybe it still was Hawaii. Next slide which shows us impressions of that. So we have lush green mountains, very Hawaiian, right? Mm -hmm. And we have, you know, very blue water and we have some very dramatic coasts and we have some dry sides, right? On, on our islands in Hawaii. Oh, yes. And so, yes, yes, yes. you know, still looks, looks pretty close, but yeah, you already, you know, we're right on. We found a substitute or a European sibling, I guess we should say. Let's go to the next slide for that and see where that, where that, where that might be. So uh, similarities here, um, you found striking similarities, not just in the overall scenery, but also here, animal life. Um, uh, you know, some uh, fauna here, there's some olds here. That, and there's some um, sea animals here, as you can see. And then there's birds and there's insects that, you know, um, amazingly. And that's again, I mean, this is uh, off the uh, geographically off the uh, African uh, continent, uh, but politically it belongs to Portugal. And this is the, the island of Madeira that we're talking about, that, that we went to. So if you're going to the next slide here, uh, we're starting to analyze again. And the, 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 in the middle at the top is our very familiar map of Oahu, which we know is comprised of two mountain ranges. 
Um, and down there is the island of Madeira. And it basically has one mountain, so to speak. And that mountain goes all the way down to the coastline. And to give you an idea about scale, uh, we found this uh, interesting website at the top right that compares. And you see the, the kind of the, the reddish is basically Madeira. And the, the bluish, the big bluish or the purplish is basically Oahu. And so that means Oahu is twice as big as Madeira or Madeira is half the size of Oahu. That's pretty much you know, a similarity, a, a big difference. Now, now, let me ask a question, which I should have looked up myself, but I forgot to do. What's the latitude of Madeira compared to the Hawaiian Islands? Because we are at 20 degrees north of the equator. Yeah. Are, is Madeira about the same? Well, if we could read this map down there, this is obviously a map that has longitudes and latitudes here, but I think this is homework we have to pass on to ourselves Correct. to the audience Correct. To do, right. uh, as right. one thing to learn from the show. I think we're we're more south, but that's sort of more a guess than I knowledge. think so too. So, yeah. so let's so let's go to the next slide. Uh, something again they share is both basically got discovered by ships by boats back then. Uh, the Polynesians, obviously, the Hawaiian Islands, and then you know kept and Cook way later, and the Portuguese very early in the 1400s, basically um, uh, Madeira. Uh, uh, Christopher Columbus was actually also staying on Madeira before he then became, you know, the, supposedly one of the discoverers of, of America. And uh, so in both cases, you see this sort of nostalgic, uh, always when I'm on my Lanai at the Waikiki Grand, I see this tourist pirate ship floating by. And, and this is a, a similar one here. And when I looked it up, it basically says it's, it's, it's a remake or remodel of actually Columbus's sort of ship. But that was then, and now is now. And now how we get to Madeira is actually the same way how do we get to the Hawaiian Islands and particularly Oahu. And that's the next slide. But uh, relative to the different sort of manifestation of, of mountainous, mountainousness on the islands, there is a challenge here that uh, you know, we in, on Oahu aren't as challenged with as uh, we are. And you were actually wishing me luck when I let you know where I'm going and I send you this information. You want to share that with everyone? <laughs> Well, the, the airport that you had to use, and which is used by tourists coming and going from Madeira, it, because there's so little flat land, they had to actually build an extension of the plain runway that's on concrete pillars. So it's like building a flat uh, surface for the planes to be able to land on that is supported by concrete pillars, not unlike the way for example, freeways are constructed in the USA. We all are aware of freeways with, that are held up that way. Um, even with this extension of the runway to make it longer, it's still a very tricky landing because there's not a lot of open space. So you fortunately made it there and back successfully, so we know it worked, but uh, it is it's consideration when you're coming and going out of Madeira to land that airplane. Yeah, and it led to this sort of. And there's one I wanted to put in, but you guys imagine when you when you get off the plane in, in Honolulu in the Great Osipov Easy Breezy Airport, but then when you get shuttled to the city, you go uh, basically uh, under Nimitz at times, right? And that's kind of a similar feel. This sort of gigantic, gigantic, monstrous concrete thing. That again is is not quite what you expect when you go to exotic islands, right? It's very man-made, and it's very brutalist. Maybe not. And we're big fans of tropical brutalism, but they don't come across as very tropical, right? They, exactly. They come across as very brutal brutalism. That's right, and that's a really good point. That be both situations, and I think a lot of people here don't think about that. But for 99% of the people who arrive here, their first view of the island of Oahu is either above, on top of, or below 
this immense airport viaduct of the H1 freeway, which again is neither tropical nor exotic nor Polynesian. Yeah, exactly. Very Western, and it has to do with tourism because it's how do you bring all these people there, right? And we got a little indication about how many people up there. There's the statistics in 2017. Uh, uh, 1.4 million tourists uh, per year came to Madeira, and that's about five times its population. And obviously, we know this is way more extreme on the Hawaiian Islands, right? So there's exactly. way more stress on the island with all the things we we keep talking about. And let's go to the next right. slide. Once again, looking at similarities and differences. So this, again, could look like somewhere uh, on the Hawaiian Islands, somewhere on Oahu, but similar to our front yard beach, or a little bit beyond that, because this is basically the heart of Waikiki up there, a picture you took when we were under lockdown, or you were under lockdown, because I was here at that time, where basically it was all vacated, and no one was vacationing. Uh, and so... Um, that beach up there, as we know, is not natural. That's artificial. That sand has been shipped in from somewhere else because you cater to the tourists who expect basically sort of a Jamaican, Caribbean, very sort of whitish kind of sand that the ones on Queen's Beach and further are natural beaches, but they're very, way more grainy, right? And, and less sort of powdery, so to speak. So this actually beach down there, this is shares it with that one because this is a this is an invasive beach that hasn't been there and it's basically been shipped in from somewhere else. And this is the only beach like that on, on the entire island of, of Madeira. And we go to the next slide, which shows us uh, there are neighboring islands as well, another similarity to the Hawaiian Islands there. This is actually uh, uh, Porto Santo, and you can already, even if you don't speak Portuguese, which I don't, but uh, luckily my wife, uh, our exotic escapism expert, Susanna, she speaks fluently Portuguese from her uh, three years she lived there, for, um, starting as a sweet 16 and for the following three years. And so Porto Santo was actually the the island that basically the Portuguese basically discovered first. And then they saw Madeira in the background as this sort of big, giant, dark kind of monster, they thought. And then they ventured out to discover that one here. And here you can see one side of Porto Santos has a sandy beach. And that's basically why you know, many people then uh, decide to move on and travel on. But there's a difference because what got shut down in Hawaii so many years ago, ferries uh, basically are still basically being the connection between the two islands. And we also threw in the image at the top right because we have a sand island just off the coast of, you know, our, our city, uh, which is, you know, our main hub, everything we kind of ship in, we get to that aspect a little later. Get to the next how far? How far apart yeah. are these two islands, Martin? And how long is the ferry trip between the two? I think the ferry trip is about like, I think half an hour or so, or not 45 okay. minutes or so. We almost did it. We had an invitation by, um, by the guy who built the hotel that we will share and show at the very end. But due to the COVID situation, um, you had to have them uh, basically get tested twice and they were only supporting once. And so here you had to get tested into island travel and test all the issues we know from, from Hawaii as well. Yeah, right. Are in place right, here right. too. So let's go to the next slide. And, and these is actually, uh, you see the same setting, but this is the next beach over. And this is the typical beaches. And this clearly shows you another uh, one of the most fundamental similarities between the two is its geology of both are volcanic, of volcanic nature. So Madeira and the Hawaiian Islands are volcanic islands. Um, here you see these pebble beaches and black pebble beaches, which is the reason uh, to share with you already why Madeira has been saved more from mass tourism than our islands. 
because they're not so attractive for the typical idyllic beach vacation because it's a little tougher to basically lounge and chill on a pebble beach. Uh, and so, uh, if not impossible <laughs> to do that, awesome. but you know, of course, we do have we do have very rocky. There are some yeah. rocky beaches like that here in the Hawaiian Islands as well. Um, but yes, as you said, people don't go lounge around on the rocks like that. It's just not comfortable. Exactly. So now we go to another difference. Or next slide. But you tell me, maybe I haven't paid sufficient attention. And now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I have seen some of these, but not to this extent. Very typical is actually that they use the pebbles for the pavement of the walkways and sometimes the streets. And that's one of the kind of the scenic things that are typical for, uh, for the Madeira Island, this kind of pebble pavement, so to speak. Do we have any of them? Act we do all? not have anything like that, and unless it's been uh, we've we unless you sometimes have we can see rocks set into concrete purely for decoration, not to walk on. So mm -hmm. sometimes around decorative pools, uh, the yep. Coco Palms Hotel on Kauai did have a, right. a setting like this around its swimming pool, but I've seen it in pictures. But I thought I've always thought it must have been uncomfortable. To no, we walk in and out of that pool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and, and they get so hot as well, right? Because they're dark. Yes, so they're like yes, yes, yes. Ouch. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Let's go to the next slide. What we do have, and we dedicated a couple of shows to that, is about a volcanic veneer and volcanic volume, we call two shows. Uh, I, I, don't, I've, I don't recall such sort of a crazy uh, avant garde sort of. Uh, creation of uh, piling up volcanic, you know, pebbles almost looks like Gaudi esque, what you see on the right side. <laughs> and it also gives you a little clue that the geological nature is a little bit more puffy, you know, a little bit more grainy. And so that's, you know, we're not geologists and we don't try to go there, but there's certainly, you know, differences in the nature of lava. but they're more marginal than, than really fundamental. But the next but slide- if you, if, Let me just say, Barton, if you go to Hawaii Island and Maui, you will see this kind of lava and you'll see at least yeah. what's called dry stack stone walls made yeah, of yeah. Uh, uh, lava yeah. the same way. That's right. And what you also see, and I guess this to the next slide, and we've been uh, talking about that in our volcanic veneer show is that today, you know, they're slicing, um, you know, basalt to the sort of wallpaper thin panels and basically gluing them onto other structures beneath. And then they don't do such a good job and they fall off, as you can see here as well. We have been taking a break, but we'll continue our automobiles and architecture show. So our rental car was a Renault that we've been talking about the Twingo before, and we will have other Renaults showing up. This is a Renault Megane that they gave us. Um, and, and once again, so the, you know, volcanic nature, you know, shows up uh, not just in the natural environment, but also in the built environment. But uh, next slide. Uh, this is interesting. This is a grocery store, a chain that's called Continenti here. And we have been doing a show about you know, my critical practice experience in that area. Um, and the salt is, 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 you know, not that much seen, you know, in, in modern architecture anymore in, on, in the Hawaiian islands. And here they're even using it for the stairs here, for the steps that go up into the grocery store. And the display in the background there, uh, we wanna go to the next slide and share that with you as well. Um, because this is um, another similarity here, difference, because there were two industries that were really, really prominent on both islands, and they're not anymore on the Hawaiian islands, and they're a little bit in Madeira. And what is, what is that? Yeah, that's sugarcane, and um, we're going to get into that sugarcane connection also then led to people from Portugal and Madeira 
coming here to the Hawaiian Islands to work in our sugar industry as well, which is why there are a number of Portuguese people here or people with some level of Portuguese ancestry. Yeah, and yeah. just like uh, you, you can see that also there's some display of some of the old sugar uh, machinery that's here in this building that you took pictures of. Just like here, we had sugar mills and we had these huge boilers and really like a, a, a factory type of uh, setup, which is all entirely gone now. Yeah. And as you said, we will go to in the next show because we're almost done with our 28 minutes again. While there was sort of a lot going on uh, in the direction from Madeira to Hawaii uh, related to sugarcane. But this here we found on that little display there, this historic display, one of these pumps basically came from the United States. It's an American uh, you know, machine. So there was exchange going on sort of both ways. The picture on the top right is in the grocery store. And they basically here map you where there is still a sugar cane production going on. And we know that the last one basically on, um, on Maui, right, just uh, shut down production about, actually, I flew over that when it was the last day of the chimney still steaming. And it just happened in a, in a plane at, at that day. So that was that was um yeah legendary and here you can see also they're doing a little bit more with their sugar cane here because there's a lot of there's a lot of rum there and there's also well to the other sort of beverage we we get to later with one minute left maybe we do the last slide here next slide as our last slide uh to basically phase out uh yeah that is that one that's something they always w want to do in hawaii but it really doesn't really and our friend uh, uh, Larry Stricker, basically, who has you know built uh, one of the best architectures on the island, um, together with Ron Lindgren and Edward Killingsworth, basically retired in California and has a vineyard there. And so um, Madeira's geology is so different that wine is actually uh, able to grow there quite well. And the bottles you see uh, there in a row is actually, you know, some of the famous Madeira wine, which is a very sweet wine. And it's, it's you know, you either drink it before your meal or after that. And um, now at the end of the show, we, we can say what you see on the very left is basically a disease of fungus that happened um, uh, about 150 years ago. And that fungus is actually the origin for a very, very a dramatic and surprising connection between the two islands at the opposite end of the world. And I think we leave it with that just so you tune in next week again and hear the continuation of that story once again to us basically now, um, you know, have learned something from the pandemic and and wanting to look more beyond our horizon and you know look at other places and we've been doing this a lot all this year with me in germany but then you can say hey germany is still significantly different than why but madeira as we keep discovering is not so there's probably a lot to learn from so true true Thank you and look forward to see you for that next week.